This is another in the first read series where I read a poem by a poet I don't know or know very little about and just have a first experience of it. Um, I'm not doing this to teach it or explain it necessarily, just talking about you know, that initial thing that got me into poetry in the first place. So Tupelo Quarterly this is where this one is from. Um, this is under the title of Folio of Poetry by Stefania Gomez, who I don't know anything about. There are several of these in this portfolio. I just picked this one. It's kind of visually oriented work. Elegy, Flying Geese. You know, I mean, the title itself, Elegy, is, you know, preps us for some something kind of sad or some tragedy or some death or something. Um, we have flying geese here. When I look at this one, automatically I'm thrown into the quandary of how to read it on the page because... Uh, it goes across the page and up and down, so I'm not sure how to read the, the stanzas. If they connect to each other, I'm supposed to do traditional left to right reading, or I'm supposed to go up and down. If I go up and down in this one, do I go all the way down? It feels like this one is split into two halves. Like, you know, I can see my cursor. It feels like there's a top half and a bottom half, but that could just be me looking at this. So they seem to be kind of mirrors of each other. Um, I like to look at the form before I look at the poem always. If you've seen any of these other videos, you kind of know that. But kind of like mirrors, we have this, these angles here and that are um, played around with these upside down angles here. Two short stanzas playing off the two short stanzas here. So this kind of mirroring effect in this, in this piece, kind of opposite mirroring effect. Does that show us how to read it? I'm not sure. I'm just going to go through and read it and see what to do from there. I can tell this is not, you know, a traditional rhymed poem at all because of the way it looks on the page. Um, so what it's doing, I'm just going to look at it on its own. So flying geese, elegy flying geese. Where are they flying to in their ancestral angle against? Them? So just reading this first one, where I, I am, what? It feels like I'm supposed to read in the stanza because it doesn't, doesn't read easily across the left to right. So I'm going to read stanzas here. I don't know what to do about stanzas order, but I can do, look at it here. Where are they flying to in their ancestral angle against? Of course, this first stanza seems to mirror the flying geese with that kind of, you know, um, triangular shape they fly in. Where are they flying to in their ancestral angle? This kind of angle, ancestral angle being brought up in the poem itself that kind of plays off the stanza, this kind of angle, angularity that's in the poem, some of the ancestral in the poem of the words themselves, but where are they flying to? Against. And then I didn't know where to go here, but I'm going to go down because that looks like it makes the most sense of reading these. A dusking orange sky, now veering gently askew since he died. So reading straight down feels like it works fairly well on this one. I'm not even sure if the stanzas are supposed to go with each other or if this is supposed to be like a collected bunch of fragments that build up to some kind of whole feeling, but since this is the first time we're reading, I'm just going to go with this. That two stanzas can seem to go together pretty well with the orange guy, where are the geese going to, um, up until the line since he died. And then I'm not sure what to do with it at that point. Um, what that means is this a specific he, like a, one, of the, one of the geese dies, or is this some he in this person's life who's looking at the geese? I don't know at this point. I don't know that I have enough to go off of, or, or it could it be both. Who knows? Um, you know, who's the elegy for? Is it elegy for flying geese or somebody you've experienced the flying geese with? I don't know. A dusking orange sky. This is a nice image where they're going in this like orange sky kind of works pretty well. And it's that question you ask with the geese in general, like, where are they going when you see them? Since he died, I'm ashamed at what migrates from one day to the next. So I just went up treating this as a top half probably could go straight down to since he died at once two birds break form what does it take to change a fate it, this one i'm not sure how to read it i think it reads well in either case because if you read it as since he died at once two birds break form so if some <laughs> bird died mid-flight maybe the two other birds break form um for a moment before they like reform it or they just break form in general what does it take to change a fate? Like, does it change, take somebody dying? Does it just take, take a form break, which would, you know, 
stand out in this poem because this poem is kind of breaking traditional form. You know, is that itself what it takes to change fate is just breaking the form, changing something that's expected? Um, or is it like a death here with some, some other bird dying that pushes you off, pushes one off of fate, whatever it is? Where do I read it? A dusky and orange sky now veering askew since he died. I am ashamed of what migrates me from one day to the next, which, you know, it's interesting because if you take it this way, it feels way more personal and not just a poem about migrate, migrating geese because it feels like it somebody died and that pushes this person migrating one from next one day to the next that like pushed them off of whatever their you know, their path was and it makes them way more daily like grief can do can change what you think is going to happen uh, especially quick grief can change what you think is going to happen and and make you live more in the, in the day what happened to us were accidents i'll never know and in this one, we don't we don't really have any answer for what this is. You know, this is a personal story from the speaker. Um, you know, maybe there's something behind it that we don't have enough on, but we know that there's some accident that happened to push this person off of their path, which is kind of interesting in itself. Or if I go down to the bottom one and go, uh, two birds, two birds break form. What does it take to change a fate to salvage in truth each season? I wish to begin anew. It's a well. With this, you know, what happens, what makes you change your faith <clears throat> when you have to salvage the season from these deaths to begin again, like you have to figure out which way you're going to go. And so even though there is this ancestral angle, you still have to figure out how to do it. If I read it straight down, then I'm going to go back to the top, which is I'm shameful when my greats with me next, which I kind of read in a similar fashion because it's like there's these deaths and this broken form and I'm trying to figure out. Um, as a, you know, like when I read the speaker, the speaker's stuck in this, what do you do when the form breaks? How do you change fate? What happens if fate has changed to you? I'm not sure. Then I go down to these last two stanzas on the right. What my survival meant, why this work is called a craft, as if it's of some use, my one life I should want. It's like, what does it mean to survive migrating after these deaths or this change of form or change of shape? Or these just questions we have of where are these geese going? I think that's it. And why is this this work is called craft? You know, you know, work the work of just trying to figure out things. Why is this called a craft? Trying to figure it out, you know, as if the poem itself is the craft of figuring out, you know, basic questions. And why would that be called craft instead of just thinking or something else? Is there some use my one life I should want as if this is a, as if, I don't know if this question is my one life I should want as if I should want the life that has to figure out these questions or as if I should want this life of trying to figure out what do you do when you break form? How do you figure out how to live one day or the next when there's a death in it? Um, an allergy in itself, you know, like to the geese, perhaps, maybe to somebody else in this person's life, we're not really sure. This one brings up a lot of just interesting questions. Um, they're very human questions uh, alongside of this image of the geese. So I think I kind of find, find this interesting. Once again, so Stephanie Gomez, uh, it does make me want to read more of uh, this person's poems. This, uh, this, uh, um, folio has other poems in it besides flying geese that are that are similar uh, playful in terms of how you read it trying to figure out how to read they like that that aspect of the form with the kind of what's happening in the meaning or the content of this poem because you have to figure out how to read the poem and very much the poem is asking questions about how do you figure out life and fate and you're doing a little bit of both as this poem goes along 